some time and it, today just seems like a, a good time to do it and uh, uh, unless you've been uh, hiding uh, in a rabbit hole for the last number of years mental health is a huge problem in our world today and COVID has not helped I, uh, I have suffered uh, from mental health issues uh, especially earlier in my life I still remember vividly at the age of 25 in Danville, Illinois, the place I was uh, interning. And uh, as I was crossing uh, the street, the busy street to go to church that morning, I stepped across the curb on the curb and a truck was coming. And uh, one half of my brain said, if you step in front of the truck, it will all be over. And the other side of my brain said, step back onto the curb. And uh, I'm glad that that side of the raid won. But I understand depression. I understand uh, anxiety. And I understand that things are probably not going in the right direction in our world today. And there's lots of reasons and causes for it. And uh, apparently there doesn't seem to be uh, much, uh, much uh, good news in the area of mental health. I was reading a book the other day at Chapters that said, uh, I, had, I just uh, read the first couple of pages, but uh, the person who wrote the book believes that there is great help for people who have mental illness if they come for help. Only 40% of the people who struggle with mental illness will actually seek help and stay committed to that help. So if we could get those 60%, to come and to get help, maybe we can change things the way they are. One of the problems today is uh, the media. Now, I'm a very liberal person and I don't blame the media for all the problems, but I will tell you this, that if you sit in front of the television all day and watch the news, 100%, you will be depressed. If you watch the news right before you go to bed, 100%, you will not have a good night's sleep. Ah, some of you probably have a good night's sleep anyway. Some of you still drink coffee right before you go to bed and have a good night's sleep. But there's, uh, there's lots of things that are happening and we are contributing to the problem by focusing on negative things. We are predisposed to lean towards the negative. We are predisposed to fearful thoughts. It's a part of our evolution. It's a part of our survival instincts. If you don't have a care in the world and you're totally trusting and don't worry about anything, something could get you. The old, there's an analogy that goes like this. Somebody living uh, in a village, two families together, one is very fearful and they build a fence around their place and they lock their door. And the other person is so carefree, no fence, no door locked, 
Guess who's eaten by the tiger? So we're predisposed to worry and to be fearful and to think in negative terms. And months and months and years and years of thinking negatively about our lives and about our world will spiral us into a dark place. We need good news. We need some positive messages in our life. We need to be able to trust our neighbors, our fellow human beings, and our family members. I think one of the things that has happened in our world today is that we don't trust people the way we used to. They see the world quite differently than we do. They are quite opposed to the way we see the world and understand the world. And, it, and I'm sure all of you can see how fractured families are and not even talking to one another. Families lie at the root of our mental health, one way or the other. How do we uh, get out of this uh, the dark spiral that we're in? Is to uplift the good news in our lives, the positive things. They say that you have 60,000 thoughts a day, okay? I counted them, I counted up 59,000 the other day, that's it. Okay, it's simple math. If you have 60,000 thoughts and 40,000 of them are negative thoughts and worrisome, troublesome thoughts, you are gonna spiral down to a dark place. If 40,000 of your thoughts are positive, uplifting affirmations about yourself, about the world, and about the people around you, it will shift how we see ourselves and shift how we see the world. I know I'm making it sound very simple, but it is. It works a lot the way I'm saying it. Positive thoughts, affirmations, and this begins in our childhoods to give positive thoughts and affirmations to our children. Most children grow up with more negative feedback than positive feedback from coaches, teachers, siblings, and, and other people in their lives. We're predisposed to that, to point out the faults in our spouses, to point out the faults in our neighbors, to find, point out the faults in our government and the people around us. Shifting to a positive way. Looking at our troublesome neighbors in a positive way. I was talking to somebody the other day who was just distraught about a neighbor that they had and uh, how they were butting heads and how uncomfortable it was for them to keep living in the place that they're living knowing that their neighbor and her are not getting along. I suggested something outlandish. I said, pray for your neighbor. At night, hold your hands into your neighbor's directions and pray a blessing upon your neighbor. And that will shift what's going on in your heart and that will shift the relationship that you're going through. In the Gospel reading today, uh, we have the Lord's Prayer and then the very famous passage, ask and it will be given you, search and you will find, knock and the door will be opened for you. This too sounds very simplistic. There are uh, many churches who believe that if you want to be rich, all you have to do is ask God with a believing heart and he will make you rich. That's not what these words are saying. If we need a change in our lives, if we need to cope with a very difficult situation, my family struggles too over the nephew who is uh, going through a terrible uh, bout of depression and paranoia, no longer has contact with any of us. How does a family deal with that? How do we deal with troublesome people and people who are troublesome minds? We ask God for strength. We ask God for the strength to heal our hearts we ask that God would give us the strength to move forward. We ask God for the wisdom. We need wisdom at times like these. 
Wisdom to rise above the way everybody else thinks and the way everybody else talks. And God's wisdom will help us through. We will never totally get rid of the issues and problems that we're facing. And mental health issues have been with us for all times. And they probably will continue to be so. But God will give us strength. God will show us the way. And if you struggle, be a part of that 40% who ask for help. Amen. Thank you.